Hello everyone! It's been a while since I made a video, and today I wanted to talk about something that I think is valuable, but also interesting. Or as interesting as it gets for, you know, school stuff. And I wanted to revisit a topic and share with you some of the lessons I learned from when I was taking Stanford's PhD quals. And many people may feel that because they're not doing a PhD, they're never taking quals, that, you know, maybe this isn't relevant to them. However, I would argue and it took me a while to you know, figure this out. A lot of the tips and strategies that I learned from the quals experience are actually relevant to you know, many other things like job interviews, and oral exams. And some of the lessons that I learned from taking quals, I use to this day in my job interviews. So I think it can be very useful for many, many people out there. So just to give you all some uh, context so you understand like what the PhD quals were, the PhD quals are an exam that all PhD students have to take if they want to continue with the program. And those who don't pass usually have to leave with like a master's, which is, you know, it's fine, but you know, not ideal if you want to, you know, finish the degree. When I was in Stanford's EE program, we had usually had to take the quals around our first or second year. And the structure of quals for Stanford EE was that we had to meet with multiple different professors in a one-on-one -on -one setting. And the professor would basically ask us one question or multiple questions, and we gave our answers as best we could. Sound familiar? And after meeting with multiple professors, they would each give us a score, and the total of that score was entered into a database. They rank all of us, and then they draw a line. People above passed, people below did not. Since then, the format for the quals in Stanford EE has changed, and now uh, students are required to present on their research that they've been doing uh, their first year to a committee of professors. And then these professors uh, ask them questions and try and figure out like whether they've been making good progress. But you know, the, the style is very similar. Some of the tips and strategies that I picked up when preparing for the qualifying exams, I use uh, to this day. And some of these tips, I think, you know, had I not taken quals, I might not even know about them. So, you know, I thought I'd share with them with you and hopefully it'll be useful uh, to some of you. So the first tip that I'm going to share with you was actually presented to us by uh, the Stanford like graduate admissions people when we were, you know, new students. When you're preparing for your exam, you want to prepare for your environment and your setting. So as an example, because we were meeting one-on-one -on -one with a professor uh, for our exams, it would make sense that uh, during the simulation of our own exams, like when we're preparing, we want to be in a room that's, you know, similar to like what an office would be. On the other hand, you know, if you're presenting to a group of professors in like a large lecture hall or, you know, a, a larger room, you probably want to practice, you know, giving your answers in a large room. And it's not just like the room that matters, but also the way in which you're communicating your information. For instance, if I'm sitting at a table with a professor and answering their questions by writing on a piece of paper, then it would make sense that when I'm practicing answering questions for an exam, I would also write on a piece of paper. And uh, if I'm giving a talk on a whiteboard in the real thing, then I want to practice writing on a whiteboard. Make sure that you're able to simulate the environment of the exam. This is pretty simple, and at the time I thought it was strange, but uh, you know, there's a difference in sort of the tactile feel of you know, writing on a board versus uh, writing on like a piece of paper, for instance. So uh, that was like a really great tip that uh, I use to this day when I'm like prepping for talks or going for interviews. The second tip I want to share with you that was also uh, something that really tripped up a lot of students, especially like in the uh, PhD quals, people had a tendency uh, to sit there quietly in thought <laughs> during these oral exams. And you need to understand that professors or whoever's like interviewing or giving you an oral exam, they can't really read your minds. So you don't want to like sit there in silence for too long. It's best that you, you know, start off with something that you know, sort of explain to them where you're at, and then verbally, like, talk yourself through the problem. And you might make mistakes here and there, but people really want to see your thought process. And 
in some extreme situations, uh, I know this, professors, like some of their course questions are just insanely hard. They expect most students like not to get the answer, but the whole point of that question was they want to figure out like how does the student think? How do they reason? What kind of direction do they take? And that is like how they were grading us. So the third tip that I wanted to give you is the following. You want to be able to compartmentalize uh, your exam. Professors, they might ask three questions and the student does bad in one and then they trip up on an easy second and third question. Don't let poor performance of an earlier question ruin your like morale and impact negatively impact your performance in later questions. This is common in everything, right? Like even like sports, if you play really bad first three quarters, you know, don't let that impact your performance in the fourth quarter. And on a similar note, try not to make the mistake of guessing how well you're doing uh, in cases where like the professor or the interviewer hides like how well you're doing. Some professors, when we were taking quals, they had sort of like a poker face, right? And during, you know, your first question, second question, like there's like absolutely no reaction as to how well you're doing. Not every interviewer is like that. Some of them, they want you to know how well you're doing. But in other cases, professors, they can't like give you hints as to how well you're doing. And so you want to sort of block that out of your mind and stop wasting your time guessing how well you're doing and just move on. Like I had a friend who did really well and the entire time he thought he did really badly uh, because like the professor just had no reaction and was like there was like no smile on his face. Now the fourth tip I want to talk about is related to sleep. It should come as no surprise that if you want to do well, especially in an oral exam, you got to be well rested. But it has been pointed out to me that you know a lot of my friends they actually have issues you know falling asleep the night right before the exam. And so, you know, they end up really tired. And here's a trick that someone taught me that has worked for me and, you know, maybe it might work for you. And that is make sure you sleep well two nights before the exam. That way it's far enough away where maybe you're a little more relaxed and can sleep better. Um, but, you know, it's close enough where by being well rested the two nights before, it can kind of trickle in into the actual exam date in case you can't sleep well the night before. Obviously, best case scenario, you should sleep well the night before the exam, sleep enough and sleep well. But for those of you who have an insomnia problem, feel free to try this out and uh, it might work. Anyway, that's it. A couple of tips and strategies that I learned from when I was taking uh, Stanford's PhD quals. I hope that some of these tips and strategies I shared with you today can be useful for you, whether it is uh, PhD quals or job interviews. And so best of luck and have a nice day.